Yo, you already know what it is. Um, episode twelve. Yes. You already know TC. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Listen, of course you already know we got a special guest. You know this one is going to be about personal development. Um, so yeah, you see it's going to be different backgrounds, but of course we're going to have to do an introduction. So uh, you already know what it is. Let's get it. So we dropping gems on we lately we have been dropping gems on people about various topics. So uh, yes. credit restoration. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else it has been? It has been health. It, help yeah build an so, equity for real estate yeah mm-hmm. yes absolutely so so now that we are doing this and we're going to continue doing this so mm-hmm. this is for the people that is uh since we're dropping gems if you would like to support us then uh first thing what you can do uh there, there's plenty of options you can mm-hmm. share this on sh- social media. Uh, you can share this with your family, friends, so you know who need to hear this. Second, what you can do is you can subscribe to the platforms that uh, we are in: uh, Spotify, uh, Apple, Anchor, Anchor, mm-hmm. yeah, um, YouTube. So, yes, if mm-hmm. yes, so that would definitely. You know, we definitely appreciate that if, you know, subscribe to us. Now, the third thing you can do to support us is you can uh, um, you can support by donating, which is Anchor has a platform where if you go to the platform and it says support, and that's where it has, uh, um, you can support by... 99 uh cents or 499 yeah yeah um, yeah it goes all the way to ten dollars yes so yeah. if you would like if if you would like to uh um donate um then we definitely appreciate that and we will definitely yes. shout not only we'll shout you out but if you have a business or thing going on but we'll definitely use that as advertisement in the middle of our podcast show or even questions we can answer them beginning the show so absolutely absolutely yes. and also if 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 you would also uh also if you would like to be a sponsor uh we'll definitely shout you out on that one also you know advertisement absolutely yes. we can do that so yeah but you know let's get into it uh, mm-hmm. Let's get to this introduction. I'm ready, ready. Let's get it. All right. So this one, we've uh, last episode we talked about water of uh, hydration levels. Now we're going to talk about the water benefits. Uh, some call this spa water. Some call this infused water. But the water benefits in Fruits, fruits, lime, lemon, whatever, you know, you're using. Uh, it's definitely the beneficial of uh, using uh, fruits with water. It's um, mm. fruits with water. It's gentle, sweet. It has a gentle, sweet taste. Also, it uh, has a sugar intake. Uh, sugar intake, it, it, it is um, reduced, um, but... Unfortunately, it does taste sweet. It does yes. taste sweet when you, you when you drink fruit with water. Mm. Um, it also has a gentle taste. It has vitamin C contained. Um, so it also has a benefit of boosting your immune system. It also has a, a very amount of um, sources for vitamins that you can look up so digestive support digestive support uh it has um so it really does is digest uh it better when your body is well hydrated um 
even if you drink plain water, like, you know, it that definitely, you know, it's better for a digestion. And mm -hmm. uh, so infused water also encourage you to drink um, when, when it benefits to drink infused water, the weight balances, it, it, it takes an effect too. It, it also helps yes. with weight balance. And um, mm -hmm. so that's why it's very important to drink plenty of water. Yeah. <laughs> um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the benefits of um, cold water and warm water, which is when we choose, even if you put fruits on warm water, um, room, um, room temperature water, uh, excuse me, room temperature water or cold water, it, uh, you start to feel like the flavor combination, whether it's room temperature or cold water. So even if you, you know, the lemon and strawberry, strawberry, uh, watermelon and mint or cucumber and mint or pineapple and ginger, you know, and water, like if, if you prepare for these things, uh, no matter like what you're using, these are the benefits of, uh, uh, drinking uh, the water, and you know it's it's a very good detox, also. So yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it it definitely keeps you um, um, it definitely keeps you detox, and it removes like it removes the inflammation in your body. Yes, yeah. very true, um, especially with lemon water. Facts. Yes. Facts. Facts. And if if you guys want to get a head start on it, that's the easiest one to make. Food infused water is just using regular lemons. Cut the lemon up. You can either just put the lemon inside the water or squeeze it. And me personally, I let it sit in the fridge and let it settle. Yeah. But honestly, drinking that every day, you'll feel a difference. Your metabolism is going to get better. If you yeah. feel like you have like you catch it down with a cold, that like it helps prevent the cold and flu, which is very important nowadays. Hmm. And even also improve your skin. So it's so much benefits to it. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you pretty much just hit it in the nail. Yes. Yeah. That's that's um that's why it's always important to drink water. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. It improves complexion, increases energy level, increases mood. You know, they, these are the things. If you use, if you put, if you put cu cucumber in water, the benefits is um, hydration, of course, weight loss, yeah. antibiotics, helps prevent pressure, healthy skin, boosts immune system. You know, mm -hmm. boosts bone health. Water lemon. I mean, you know, water lemon. It good source of vitamin D. Weight loss, improved skin quality, digestion system, um, fresh breath, <laughs> improved kidney oh, stone. Say that one more time. <laughs> say that one, like, one more time. Because I'm not telling you guys are like that, but it's some people, ah, oh, you be looking at them like. So I'm just saying. So you're saying mm. when you're talking like, when you're talking like, you be like, oh, what you got that, man? <laughs> I got, I got a wedge in my pocket. You want the lemon? <laughs> you been kind of kicking like Mr. Ed the horse. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so lemon water. Uh, I had, yeah, fresh breath. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, just remember, lemon is acid, but it's yes. it, it is good for you. It's very it's very good for you. Now, lime water. Lime water. This is that. This is like the the best for me because it helps with inflammation. It helps with like it cleanses your body. The pH level is high. Yes. It kills mm -hmm. mucus. It kills mucus in your body. Fights infection. Um, improved digestion. Weight loss helps. It helps our weight loss. Lower body sugar, reduce heart disease, prevent cancer, reduce inflammation. Like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
like it's the Hulk of Waters. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like, you know, we, we keep it simple when it comes to water. Yeah. Yeah. Water is like, yeah, I remember water is what 75% of our body? Yeah. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. So it's basically our key to life. We need it to survive. Fact. And adding these fruits is just an extra benefit. Mm-hmm. You stay hydrated and you get all these vitamins and all the other benefits that these fruits offer. So just saying, if you want to start getting on a healthy track, you can always start with infused water. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, yeah. you know, so let's get it. That was the introduction. Uh, so on the next episode, we're definitely going to talk about the water brands, the benefits of water brands, Poland Spring, uh, Dasani, Dasani, Aquafina. Yeah. Like, you know, what, mm-hmm. what, what effects can it take and what's the benefits? So, yeah, yeah that's going to be for the next episode. But now let's get to our special guests. Um, well, first off, I want to say she is amazing. Yes. <laughs> let's 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 yes. get let's get that first. Uh, um, so her name is Kimberly Anton, aka Soul Servant. So first, yeah. I'm going to uh, plug in to this poem that she did on God did not create me for no reason. I have a purpose video. And then we're going to tap in to the gem she's about to drop, y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it, y'all. All right. We on this time and it's God like, you see this God like? Clear path. Let's do this math. God's like, love yourself. You are the light. I'm like, God's right. I am the light. I can't reflect. I just shine bright. Outshine small minds in search of God's might. I stand in front of this mic stand. Spit my soul through this mic, man. Spit God from my throat, man. Me and God be building bands. Spiritual souls gathering at his throne. Asking God to help them with their plight. I promised them. I would lead them to the promised land of man. They asked how. Because God lives right inside the soul and mind, so deep inside. God is your birthright. Your birthright. It's your girl, the world, but I'm Kimberly to meet every, every single day. Like, I have to remind Kim, like, you know, just breathe, relax. Everything is going to be okay. Well, I, like when I'm not where I'm supposed to be in life, I'm just have to be like, okay, maybe you weren't supposed to be there at that time. So there's two different relationships with the, with the poet me, the performance me, when I'm out here motivating and inspiring people, and then really just having to deal with myself and my own traumas and my own triggers, you know? So what I, what I do is when I go through my own like personal experiences and journeys, and I finally have breakthroughs with them, then I go out and I teach it to people like, look, I was struggling with this for a long period of time. And these are the tips I I can give to you because I could see you're struggling with something that I was struggling with. So too often we make people feel guilty or bad, you know, like, yeah. Oh, how dare you be in this place? Like, bro, you was in the same place five weeks ago. Who are you to be, you know, like, so like, Mm. I really just, that's, I, I believe that's how I've become who I am. It's I've had a lot of people try to push me down. And I don't want to be that person in the world. I want to be something different. I want to be able to uplift people, you know, really inspire them and motivate them. I'm not always great at it. I'm still human. People get under my skin sometimes, you know, I'll have an outburst there and there, but none of us isn't perfect, bro. Like really the moment we all realize we're all, we're all a project and we're all just growing into the person God has created us to be daily. It's not like you're there yet. You're never there. You know, your destination is, as long as you're breathing, as long as you have like light and because your light is like your fuel. So as long as you have your light inside of you, you can still drive and go where you need to go. And that's what we have to remember. Like this spiritual journey, you're never, you're never where you're supposed to be ever. It's a keep climbing, you know, but 
Sorry for my long-winded answer. I, I felt <laughs> that one. I felt Let's that when you it. said that part. I felt that. Yes. yes. <laughs> See? Yes. Let's get it. T TC, you got any questions? So my question is like, how do you acknowledge that like you're not in the mind space you want to be? Because some people may have a hard time realizing they're in like a position they're not happy with, but they stick with it because that's all they know. Like, how do you identify that? So let me tell you, I had to take a risk about like two years ago. I mm. was, I, I, I found myself in the most traumatic place I've ever found myself in my life, right? And just really trying to move the pieces and still understanding who I am. And I lost my job. And then I wasn't working for a whole year, like after that. So it's just like, I just started working after losing my job just recently. But I love that period of time because it really just allowed me, it's just pausing yourself. One thing I learned in that season was to learn how to be still. Like I was always in a rush trying to figure things out, how to put things together. I was always trying to be perfect. And I had to be like, who am I trying to be perfect for? So sometimes it's not, you're not having a relationship with yourself. That's why I said it's a difference between soul servant and Kimberly, Antoine. So having a relationship with the child me, the person that I grew up to be, you know, like remembering the small things about myself just reminds me to be still like him. It's okay. Like there was a time you weren't able to walk. There wasn't a time you weren't able to feed yourself, but look where you're at today. So really celebrating the small things, as small as it might be, you know? I remember there was a time I would not get on a bike to save my life, but now I would try. And it's just knowing like I could break through my fears. You know, I was just teaching, teaching my kids about like courage and like, what does courage mean to you? And that being courageous is a mentality, you know? And to be, um, and then to be confident is a feeling. So like, what do you, what are you walking with? Like, are you walking with self-confidence? Are you courageous to get through your day? It doesn't matter what happens. Bad things happen daily. Like look, look at the times we're living in. But if you allow the small, tiny bit, they're small. Like COVID, as big as it may seem, is small comparing to the bigger picture, like comparing to where we can go and what we can manifest. So I tell people, if I could tell people one thing, be still. Like when things don't look like it's going right, be still because you really find yourself in that stillness. It's really mm -hmm. in the midst of chaos, you hear your clearest voice. Like I never heard myself so clearly until I lost everything. It's like, now I know what I need and I know what I deserve and I know where I want to go. I didn't have that direction. I was powerful. I was strong. I had all of the skills because God creates you with your skills, but to have destination, to have direction, you have to be willing to listen. Like, so be still and listen, man, because God is always talking. Okay. Facts. Okay. Facts. Okay. <laughs> That's the ball. So that's basically it. like mastering patience in a way, but yourself. Mm hmm. Okay. Because oh, I'm still okay. learning how to do that myself. Like, yeah. Daily. Like, I don't, I, I mean, like, I, even the biggest, like, person that's like, I meditate and I'm at peace. It's like, you still have work to do too, because something could shift you at any moment. You know, that's what it means being a human being, like, really. And having this flesh, it's like, yeah, your spirit is bigger than this flesh, but it is contained in there. So you have to know how to be contained within yourself. Like, you know, it's like, sometimes we try to do too much. It's like, slow down. All of this is not necessary. Yes. Like, just. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Especially in New York. Time. Yes. Yes. Seriously, yes. like. Yes. Okay. Talk about Ooh. affirmation. Talk about it. Yes. So oh, I love affirmations. Let me tell you. Okay. Um. So I remember when I first, when I first started be like going to church again, I was like, you know, church, family, and like your own, like who, what you've learned in life through reading and experiences is different. So I'll get into church and it's like, you can't do affirmations. That's of the devil. And I'm like, hold up. Let me tell y'all something about my affirmations. Okay. <laughs> I've been in some very tough and difficult times. Affirmations either keep me motivated mm -hmm. You know, it keeps me out of depression and anxiety, like just really being affirmed to see what I really want. But I do, I've started to stop doing so much word affirmations and more mental affirmations, like mm. visualizing the words and seeing them and becoming one with them before I even speak it out loud, you know, and like 
embracing it in my heart. Something the Bible really taught me is like your heart is where your truth lies. So if your truth is in your heart and I could connect my affirmation to my heart, then I could actually really see it manifesting, right? So I don't just affirm with words because your words could be very disconnected to how you're really feeling. So I could be like, I am, I am happy. But if I can't place it here first, it's never going to connect with the vibration of the words, right? So then the affirmation is not going to actually happen. So there's more to affirmation just than what you're saying. We really have to teach people like how you feel about what you say is ultimately what you get. You can't lie to the, you can't lie to God. You can't lie to spirit. You could oh. try to lie to spirit, but you can't. So if you're saying I am happy, but spirit, spirit reads your heart. It doesn't read your mouth. So if you're saying I am happy, but spirit is looking at your heart and is seeing that you don't really want that happiness, it's not gonna, it's not gonna deliver it to you. And that's what deliverance is. It's you, you create your own deliverance by what comes out of your mouth, but it what's connected to your heart. Like our hearts keep us alive daily. So why wouldn't it keep us alive with what we say? So if you, if you truly want to affirm and create affirmation, first sit down in your heart. That's where that stillness, that moment when you're still, then you're able to be like, okay, having, like I told y'all, like I have this moment now where I'm able to say, this is who I am. This is what I want. So like a perfect example, I was in school a few years ago. I was failing. Like I was saying it every day. I want to pass. I want to pass. I want to pass. But in my heart, I didn't believe it. So it never came true. But this time I'm like, look, I'm passing all of my classes. It's over. I don't care what nobody tell me. I mean it though. Like I could feel it in my heart. So I know you guys know that feeling in your heart when you feel confident, when you know like nothing isn't going to move. That's the perfect time to make affirmations. It's like when that's when the spirit is inside of you and it's with you. And that's the, that's when two, it's not just you now, you, it's you plus the spirit allowing something to grow and to manifest and to become. So you have, it's not just your energy, it's the power of all with you, the omnipresent power. And that could, that could shift walls. That's how walls was breaking. This is how the, if you really believe that the red, the, the sea split in half for Moses, this is how these things happen. Moses didn't just, it's not just hearing the word of God, it was believing that word and trusting in it to make it happen. It's the same thing with you. You got to trust what God is saying inside of you and actually believing it in your heart and then speaking it into reality. So that's affirmation for me. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> TC. <laughs> so what did what inspire you to like get on on this spiritual journey mm. oh my mother she is amazing guys i have the best mother on this planet i claim that with all of my heart let me tell you this woman has taught me i am her okay without my Ooh. mom i wouldn't be this person that i am today mm. like it's so interesting i seen this meme yesterday and it was like when your grand when your grandmother is pregnant with your mother, you are already inside of your mother's womb. And I truly believe that because I feel like my mother wouldn't be so amazing without my grandmother, because my grandmother is also the bomb, right? So my spiritual self is really listening to my elders, truthfully, like having deep conversation with my mom. Like we're both Aquarian. So we'll sit down and talk all day about like out of the out of the off the wall stuff you know and i really like having someone where you could build with that way it keeps you healthier you know and i've had some really dope mentors like i could name people like miss deidre lacy from crown height center being young and having these role models in front of me teaching me and guiding me and calling out the light inside of me i had a lot of people just calling my light out like you have a light inside of you. So when I was being ratchet and ghetto, eh, stop it. You have a light inside of you. So, you know, I had a lot of correction. And the only thing that saved me was I accepted those corrections. So stubbornness is not your friend. And feeling like you know it all is not your friend. So I really, yeah. I was a hum, I humbled myself. God says to be a humble servant. And when you become a, like David, bro, let's think about David. Like David was a humble servant. And though Saul just turned his back on him, God still blessed him, like gave him a whole kingdom. And that kingdom, Christ came from it. That's the kind of greatness I want to obtain. Like, so my grandfather was amazing. He was healing people. He was laying hands on people and healing them. I want to tap into that greatness. And the only way I could do that is if I, if I really embrace what, where I come from. So my mother told me where you come from is 
who you're going to become, right? So mm -hmm. I'm from Haiti and I believe the power of my ancestors reside deep inside of me in order to continue to allow that to manifest. I have to trust in that. I have to trust in that spirit that guides me. Like I trust in my spiritual self. I trust in that relationship that I have with my spirit, you know? Some people are touched earlier on in life. Some people are touched later on in life. I feel like God touched me really early in life because I've always loved going to church. Like I always love being around spirituality. I love learning about it. I love just, just knowing the different aspects of people's lives, right? Because to me, that spirit is the relationship I have with Diamond is spirit. The relationship I'm going to create with you is spirit. And it's like, when I have these moments and these connections, it helps me grow more like spiritually. It's like, yo son, I just had this conversation and Diamond comes and it's like, yo kid, you know what I was just like, oh my God, Diamond, like, it's, the, it's those moments. And like those moments are like, that's like, that to me is what I, that's how I've become so spiritual. It's like, man, God is really out here talking like, and he's really using us, the vessels, you know? It's like, I don't know. I don't know what Bible people be reading, but when I read the Bible, I'm like, I get it. I get it. Like, I get it. It's like these vessels are going to feed me in order for me to become exactly the fruits we want to produce, right? What we're doing right now, we're producing fruits by sitting on this podcast together. One, somebody had an idea, spoke to somebody else, and now we are planting and making more trees. And this is how we grow a whole forest of just in, like endless possibilities. And you know, like, so again, like that's how I've become spiritual. My relationship with my mother, my grandparents, just my elders, and now my peers, you know? Mm. And that's a different level that God has taken me through with my spirituality that has helped me grow. I would tell you this though, my spirituality never has grown inside of a, of a building. That's not it for me. Like I cannot be constrained or like be held back or be rude, like, because God says to let go of the law. And one thing I realized going into the church, the church focus so much on the law. It's like, where is the love? God gave us, a, gave us two commandments, and one of those is love. And mm -hmm. people lack that. It's like, you need to, you need to, and it's like, you need to love, bro. That's what you need to do. Okay? Preach. You are about all my sins, but you yeah. need to love. You need to love Preach. me. Mm -hmm. You need to love me when I'm at my worst. You need to love. And love doesn't mean you don't correct. Love just means you're able to have compassion towards my hurt and my trauma. Yes. So literally, my trauma is the reason why I'm so spiritual, literally. It's like, let me tell you, nobody but God hasn't got me here. So, you know, what else can I trust? <laughs> Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, look at TC. <laughs> I just want to say here and listen to everything you got to say. Because, you know. <laughs> You know, yeah, let, I'm telling you, let, what can I say? That's a lot to say. Yo, let's yeah. get it. So, Bob, ooh, 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 I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, please. <laughs> look. Ghost, okay, he walks around, he's like the Holy Ghost. I know. <laughs> I love it. Like it's contagious, yes. though, Diamond. Like that smile, just your personality is really contagious. Mm, like, yes, I yeah. love it. Yo, good yes. energy. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It's, it's yeah. all we need. Definitely. Oh God. Yes. yes. Next question. Um, how can we, or, um, how do we, or how can we, or deal with toxic people that's within either like friends, loved ones, family. How do we deal with these type of people? I need to hear this one here. Because... <laughs> I, used to, I used to think it was cutting them off. Like just, I would just throw people out the window. Like, I don't need you. You stressing my life out. But I, it's really forgiveness, guys. Like, um, I think me and my family came from a very traumatic place. And now I could be around them and laugh and smile. I, there was a time I would leave the house just not to be around them. And now I'm leaving where I'm living to go see them, you know, and to spend hours with them and just to talk to them. So forgiveness. It's like when you understand that you have trauma and you hurt people, you would understand that people just have trauma and they're hurting you. 
So instead of holding them, uh, holding them accountable for the hurt that they cause, try to, you know, respond to the, to the pain that they're feeling and try to deal with that. And that's how I work with my mom, with anybody in my family. It's like, I know you're hurt somehow. So I know this tone that I'm hearing, this, 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 this hate that I'm feeling, it's not really you. It's something inside of you that's suppressing you, that's making you feel heavy and trying to make you hold you down. And this is why the first commandment is love, because if you're able to love people through their pain and through their trauma, they might be able to, you know, grow and become better. Now, there are some relationships that's just too toxic, okay? But when you recognize somebody's not prepared to heal or ready to change, you have to be responsible for yourself to letting them go. Too often, we try to hold on to people we, we can't hold on to. It's like, why are you trying so hard to hold on to this person? And what is it going to bring forward for you? And usually, it brings you nothing. So you have to be, like, understand, one, the relationship. Like, I would never tell somebody to just throw their parents away. That's your parents. Like, you came out of them. And honestly, trying to figure out a way to heal that relationship would ultimately help you and your kids, okay, in the future. Because you and your family are blood-related, and blood ties is very strong. I don't care what nobody tell y'all, okay? Blood ties are spiritually very strong. So if me and you are connected by blood, you know, even if you, like, people do water ceremonies, it could be whatever it is. These water and blood are very important elements. So how you connect with somebody, okay, when you're crying over them, when you're doing these different things, you're literally, you don't, you don't realize it, but you're creating a spiritual connection, a spiritual tie with that person. So when you start to forgive them, you begin to release that connection, you know, and you can either one, choose to recreate a new one or choose not to create one at all because all of us are not meant to go down the same path. Like you have to pay attention to where God is taking you versus where he's taking someone else. Like I have some friends that I love dearly, like love them, but personally they would never call me their friends ever in their lives again. I'm okay with that. And, and I'm okay with that for me. It's like our direction is different, but my love for you would always remain the same, no matter how you feel about me. I want to see you go where you need to go, but we don't need to go together, okay? So you have to learn to really let go of people. It's not, a, it, letting go of people is not a matter of hate. Now, when you see, when you just cutting people off because you're angry or frustrated or irritated, that's not a matter of making a decision out of spirit. That's you making a decision out of you just being egotistical. So don't answer to your ego, answer to what God is telling you to do. I've woken up some days and I've heard God just tell me not to talk to people, like just stop talking to this person. And not be fighting it. And he would literally make something happen where me and that person stopped talking. But if I had just listened to the spirit of God, I would have I wouldn't even been in that situation. So you're already, if you're if if you're thinking about why you shouldn't be around someone, it's probably because God is trying to let you know that that person is not meant to be in your life. You understand? Mm -hmm. So just again, listening to yourself. This is why it's good to be still. Because now I know what, like I said, I know what kind of friends I want now. Like I don't want my friends in the club every weekend. I don't want a friend that's dressed scandalous. That's just not what I want. Doesn't mean if you're like that, there's something wrong with you. No, it's fine. That's your lifestyle. Like, but where can we go together? Because, because I don't have an issue with your lifestyle doesn't mean your lifestyle is good for me. Like I have a certain charge over my life that I got to respect. So God doesn't want me dressed in a certain way. God might not want me eating certain things. That's my relationship with God. And this is why relationship with God, I could have a friend twerking every single day and still make it to heaven. That's her relationship with God. You understand? Because if God tells her, look, yo, you good, bro. Like you good. Like this is just, I need this much from you. Okay, mm -hmm. this is where I'm going to take you. This is where I need you to do. Maybe she needs to be in a club because she's going to meet somebody in that club. And in 10 years from like, from now, both their lives change. Who am I? Who are you? You don't know. So too mm -hmm. often we're trying to puppet people's life. We're like, oh, no, do this, do this. And it's like, live your life because it's your intention. So your intention matter. Live your life. Forgive people and live your life. Just forgive them and live your life. We carry trauma. Trauma is not carrying us. Like we choose to hold these baggages. We choose to hold other people's stuff. Why are we so mad at other people for being hurt? I like this. These I'm not. I like these are questions I ask myself. Like Kim, are you serious? You're mad at this person for hurting you. Like you've never hurt nobody else. 
or like somebody says something offensive to me are you really offended right now like you've never said anything offensive or me and my boyfriend would get into it right and i'd be like i'd be so mean to him sometimes right because i'm a little bit i'm older than him so he's younger so sometimes that eldership would come out and then he'd be like yo baby <laughs> baby like can you speak can you just speak a little bit better and i'm like you, you know you you know when your boy, you know women don't like admitting when they're wrong. So, you know we do one of those. You know, Yo, you know, you know. You said it, not me. You know. <laughs> so it's and it's like, but it's this is what I'm saying. Like to you, you might see me one way, but my relationship with my boyfriend, he's gonna tell me, "Yo, baby, you need to grow. You need to check this about yourself. You need to, you know, mm. because every relationship is different." So for me, like I'm still dealing with relationship trauma. So learning how to be my best self in a relationship is what's important. I know how to be a great friend. I know how to be an amazing daughter, but I was never taught what it meant to be a great girlfriend or I never had that role model. So now I have to learn how to become that. So there's always something we're learning to become. So I have to forgive myself for not knowing. So when you forgive yourself, you're able to forgive others and you just, all these traumas just go right out the window. Like, Look, I thought I was going to be mentally ill for the rest of my life. I believe mental illness can be like, not just I'm going to prescribe you medication so you could be fixed for the moment. I believe we can heal our mental illness. I truly believe that. You can. And I believe, yes, you can. Like, it could just completely go away. You could be bipolar, never be bipolar again. I believe that you could change these chemical imbalances in your body, not just by the way that you eat, but by the spirit that you welcome within you. Because when you have wrong energy manifesting inside of you, how can you be balanced? How can you feel good? Of course, you're going to have traumas and triggers let go of the enemy in your body like they're you know what do we call viruses they're enemies to our body there's any en- there's spiritual enemies to your body also and we just got to pay attention to these different things you know yes yes yes, yes. yeah absolutely tc yes. tc i definitely believe when you say mental illnesses could be healed i yes. definitely believe that and i stand by that because once upon a time i was in a dark place and I felt like I was gonna be stuck there for my whole life. Yeah. But like you said, like I start talking to myself and start realizing it's like, bro, get your shit together, but you don't get to do this. Smack yes. myself a few times. I'm like, we're gonna go to Manhattan, walk in the park, and you're gonna buy a Chick-fil-A sandwich and be happy. Let's That's go. exactly what happened. Let's so go. That later on, but it's all good because let's I felt go. Good. Let's go. I made sure I changed my mindset and I completely agree with you. Let's go. I, I agree with you. And for you, it was just going to the park and eating that Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yes. And for me, it was just going to church consistently for a year. I needed to do one thing consistently without missing mm-hmm. a day for a year. And that was me going to church. You know, like for Diamond, I'm I'm just talking. But I, I, I believe it's yes. the podcast. I believe it's the quotes and the clothes. Like, I see a diamond has shifted so much from the person mm-hmm. that I know when I first met him to who he is now. That smile, that contagious yes. smile. He didn't yes. wear it like that before. He wasn't wearing it like this. Now I could literally feel, I'm telling you, he's a walking Holy Ghost. Like, and this is what he mm-hmm. aims to be. He aims to just, when he comes at people, just their energy is shifted. But yes, that took making a decision. I'm sorry for speaking for you, diamond, but. <laughs> You know, Thank like you. That's Yo, true. You know, he's, he's like contagious <laughs> in a good way. Yes. yes. It's a, like yes. it's an amazing, amazing. It's like Thank you, Diamond, for believing in yourself and believing in I remember when we were having conversations about just doing this stuff. And now he's on episode 12. Like <laughs> And matter of fact, I could tell you where I was at when I had that conversation with Diamond. I was at Dollar Tree, okay, on Flatbush, okay, picking up some stuff. And I was on the phone with him. The line was long, too. I would never forget that day. And these, like, Mm -hmm. that's, and things I don't forget are things that I know God are going to make come true. Like, I, Mm -hmm. I would never forget that moment, ever. There's things I can't remember for the lick of me like don't ask me like i can't remember at all mm-hmm. but i remember that i really do i remember that conversation having that conversation with him on the phone that day it was a nice sunny day too it was sunny that day it was hot mm-hmm. i remember <laughs> yeah yeah you uplifted my soul <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly that's how you are man like even yeah. before the podcast i woke up i was just like oh yes at it 
Uh, <laughs> Yo, I know. can't. And then Don was on the phone like, you ready? I'm just like, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I, I, yeah. And took my time on and now here I am awake and he's full of energy. Like, he could do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. That's really diamond. And I mean, you need people like that around you because it keeps you inspired. Yes. My friend just told me yesterday, because I'll do this thing, like, I'll hang out with you, hang out with you, and just like, be me. And then, like, I still have a life. So, you know, I got to go about my regular life. Now I'm in school, mm. I'm working. So then, like, I get lost in, like, just trying to keep myself together. And then she was like, I mm. haven't heard from you, spoken to you. So you can't do that. You can't give us all this good energy and just disappear, like, People yeah. need that inspiration. And it's like, damn, I didn't even know people needed me. Like, <laughs> so you don't know how you much your, yeah. you don't know how mm-hmm. much your energy is needed, bro. I tell you, that's the reason why I would never kill myself. I don't care what's going on in my life. It's like, mm-hmm. I am going to stay here because somebody needs me. Shit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. world needs you. Absolutely. No. The world like, is waiting for you. I'm telling you. The world it is waiting. waiting for all of us. Okay, Diamond. Yes. I look, yes. PC, I don't know you really, but if you're with Diamond, the world mm. is waiting for you too, because we all here about to break doors all 2020. Yes. I didn't yes. tell you when COVID first hit, I was like, I'm not dying because I did not feel my purpose yet. Okay. And my shirt said God created me with a purpose. So yes. Okay? yes. Absolutely. That's a I, diamond I, cash quote. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a purpose. And for our listeners out there, this is how. You speak light to each other. This is how you speak godly into each other. Always, consistently. This is how we do it. We speak light into each other. And that's what it is, what we need. That's Mm -hmm. what we need. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. Um, how, How can we... What advice would you give to people that are down? Hmm. Like sometimes, you're speaking to them. Yes. Sometimes when you're down, it's okay to stay there. We mm. and being still and knowing, understanding why you're feeling like that, becoming we run from our emotions, which then make us run into other places we don't need to. Reasons why we enter bad relationships, we get into addictions and all these different aspects of our lives is because we don't want to sit with the bad stuff or what we consider the bad stuff. Who's to say when you're feeling down, it's not just you really recognizing a part of yourself that you didn't see before. And if you allowed yourself to go through that journey, how much quicker would you actually heal? And I believe that's the different ways we'll be able to heal our mental illness is by just sitting our mental health, right? I don't like that word illness. The way we can actually like help our mind become healthier is just by saying, you know what? Wait, what is this feeling that I'm feeling? I know the world tells me it's a bad one, but what is it actually? You have to really begin questioning what society has taught you because you got to remember there's a world that we live in, but it's a world that God has created. So if we think before when Adam and Eve was where they, when they were in the garden of Eden, let's stop, th- let's stop thinking about garden of Eden as a physical space, but as a, a, a mental space, right? So mm-hmm. where, where, where was their mind before they were introduced to the knowledge of good and evil before they knew the difference between being naked or not? What, what, what did so that state of mind look like? And how do I get to that state of mind? So you really got to ask yourself, how do I get myself into a state of mind, right? That where, when I'm feeling different emotions that I don't connect with the emotion specifically, but understanding why I'm feeling that. So let's say if I'm feeling down. Okay, Kim, why are you feeling down? It could be, I don't have any money. Look, let me tell you. For me, that'd be a reason why I feel down, okay? So let's say, like, I'm having some financial issues. I'm just, like, completely down. I'm just like, oh, my God, I don't understand, like. So now I just take a moment. Like, why do you feel like that? Like, you know what? My finances are not where they're supposed to be. I'm grown. I would like to have a certain kind of income. Then I can have a conversation with myself and be honest with him, right? And then it's like, after I'm honest with myself, then I can go to God and pray, like, look, God, I'm really not feeling this right now. And I really need your help. I need you to help show me how I can change this, how I can get a solution. I just need a solution. But when you're feeling down and you sit with it, now you know exactly what to go to God with. 
versus you're feeling down and you start to feel anxious and you're just like, oh, I'm angry now and just forget everything, you know? And it's like, come on, it's okay to be down. Like if I'm going to encourage, I'm not going to tell anybody not to be down. That's not what I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to tell y'all it's okay to be down. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad. If you weren't supposed to have the feeling or the emotion, it wouldn't have been given to you. It's given to you. It's a skill. It's a tool. You just need to have that relationship with it versus looking at it as something bad. Because if you do, then that's, that's what you're going to continue manifesting is a worse experience with that feeling. But if you can look at all your feelings as they're, look, all my feelings are important. Say that to yourself. All of my feelings are important and I need to recognize each one and just sit with it. That would literally help you just kind of break through life life okay life like life like whatever you want you'll be able to just obtain it like there's so much more that I want to manifest in my life but I'll tell y'all in the last couple months that I've changed my mentality my state of mind getting into that garden of Eden in my mind I've been able to just kind of break through life things that I thought was impossible things that I didn't think I would be able to do ever again like like TC said there are things I never thought I'd be able to get out of bed okay and now I'm sitting here and I'm able to smile again. I'm able to laugh and be myself. I thought I lost that Kimberly. Some days I was like, oh my God, I don't know what happened to Kim. It's, my mind was already letting me know that I lost myself and I need to go search for me, you know? And that's how I found me was a conversation I kept having with me. I was being honest, like, yo, instead of just laying there and being blank and dark and just, you know, sitting, just sitting and just feeling it. I started to have a conversation with me like, yo, why do you feel like that? That's how I ended up leaving my church. These are how I made a lot of important decisions. I, I just realized a lot of places that I was at wasn't for me, but that wouldn't have happened if I was continuously emotional and responding with my emotions versus responding with my true self, which is just, again, it, it all goes back to being still, honestly, like it's going to go back to the very first thing I said, it goes back to being still because when you're still, you're able to, you're able to just kind of like, you're able to just know who you are. Like, I can't even explain that relationship you begin to have with your spirit. It's like, it's not a feeling. I used to always thought it was a feeling. It's something bigger than a feeling. And it's really that Christ-like, like, I don't think Christ is the feeling, you know? I always thought like Jesus was a feeling. It's just like, it's something bigger than, because you can't feel it. It's like, it's so big. You can't even ex explain how it feels. So it's not a feeling. It's it's like something moving through you, right? And it's like, and it moves through you and it just begins to expand. So sit, when, when you're feeling down, just sit with it and you will see where it expands you to. And I promise you, if you're able to have a positive relationship with yourself, it will always take you somewhere great. So it's like, I'm down, but hey, I'm going to speak to myself. I just had therapy yesterday. My therapist was saying that to me. And I was like, yeah, these are things that I do. Like keep confirming letting me know that I'm doing the right thing. Because if, if again, when you start to do these things, you're going to meet the right people and the right people are going to come and talk to you. And they're going to continue giving you the message that you're going to receive the confirmations. Like go to that park, go eat that Chick-fil-A. You might, a random person might come sit next to you and start talking. Y'all really like Chick-fil-A. That's the spirit. The spirit sent you to Chick-fil-A because the spirit knew you needed a word. But the spirit also knew that this person was going to walk past and they really love Chick-fil-A and they were going to sit down and have a conversation with you. That's just how God, you know, how God would work in your life to change and shift you. It might be the bird. The bird might come right next to you, okay, because they see that Chick-fil-A. But the way the bird might have flapped its wing might just give you a gentle touch, like a reminder, like life keeps going, you know. So sit when you're feeling down, sit with it. Don't run from your feelings. I don't care what nobody tell y'all, okay? It's okay to be sad. Sometimes I walk down the street looking angry, okay? And people be like, smile. You know, men love doing that to you. And I look at them, I don't feel like smiling. I'm sad and I'm angry today. You smile. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's okay. <laughs> Yo. Woo. That's funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any yeah. any questions, TC? My next question is, um, how you make sure you stay in this positive attitude, like as an everyday routine? Woo. I know you say staying still, but like, what other steps are there? It's hard. 
It's hard. Even for me, who's always smart, it's hard. Honestly, mm. I will say just create the right relationships. Like having the right people around you really helps you stay like this. You know, doing mm. things that you love. Like I write poetry. You know, that makes me happy. Um, I'll read. That really keeps me joyful. But for real, for me, it's the kids. I hang out with a lot of kids. Like my friends are, mm. are kids. Like literally, like this is the reason why I can't be like this. Because I could be myself around children because, I mean, they want this energy. They want it. They crave it. They desire. They want an adult that will come into their life and just play with them for hours. So I surround with myself with the people that I'm supposed to be around. And I'm supposed to be around children. That's what I'm called for. So mm -hmm. you find your calling, you will stay happy. Like, you will find out what, you, what you're good at. What makes you happy? Do you, like, do you like kicking soccer balls? Go ahead. Like, it don't have to make you money. Sometimes I watch people kids for free. I don't make money. Most times you will see me with children. I'm not getting paid. I do it because I know it keeps me happy. I would tell the parent, like, I know you can't afford my services. It's cool. Your child is actually giving me more than you could ever give to me by paying me, like, because this is my joy. And when God is ready to pay me for it, I'm going to make billions of dollars. Okay. You don't have to worry about you paying me. I'm going to get paid. So just trusting and knowing, like, look, look do what i love to do look okay look it took me a while to smile with this missing tooth it took me a while to do a lot of stuff but just i did it because of the kids literally like i had to mm -hmm. tell myself if i want the kids to accept themselves when they have cuts and scratches and whatever all over themselves i have to present that so this is the kids i'm telling you that's my motivation so what's your motivation what keeps you happy like my boyfriend keeps me focused. Like I want us to get married. I want us to have our own home. I want to get a car. I want certain things. So because I want these things, that's my focus. So I'm going to stay passionate. I'm going to stay excited. That's what made me excited again. It's like, I have a person that I love and that I want to spend the rest of my life with. So now if I want to spend the rest of my life with you, how do I create that? How do I actually give that me to you? I don't want to be this angry person in a relationship. So I have to work on manifesting the peace that he needs as a husband. I can't be a wild, outrageous girlfriend. I can be, but I am, but I don't want to be. You understand? I want to manifest that person that I know he needs. You know, the person that I know he so desire. Like, I want to be that person for him. And the only way I can be that is by just, yo, Kim, like what keeps you motivated? Again, my boyfriend keeps me motivated and children keeps me motivated and creating a happy family. I want my children to be happy, like happy. Like I want my kids to be truly. You're on mute. You're I know, on mute. Yeah. I know, yeah. two okay. seconds, guys. <laughs> you know, I meant What's to say two seconds and I put y'all on mute. Two seconds, I gotta give somebody something really quickly. All right, no problem. All right, oh. All right, so this is what it's about, y'all. Yo, listen, mm -hmm. I'm talking, yo, this is what it's about. But for what, like, what she was talking about was like, and, and I want to go back to speaking, you know, life into each other. So it's like, you know, when me and uh, let's say me and TC is, is, is greeting, um, for example, um, so we are, and this is just advice for folks, that uh, you know that that we are friends, family, um, you know, people that um we are associating ourselves with. Mm -hmm. We speak life into each other, like, "Hey, King, how you doing? Hey, Queen, how you doing? You know, th mm -hmm. this is what we do when we speak life into each other. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so you'd be like, you know, just like me and TC, you'd be like, "Hey, what's up, man? Hey, we yeah. go." And, you know, yeah. and you say, I am necessary. Well, I am you. I'm a reflection of you. Yes. So that, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. So that's how we yeah. speak life in each other. You know, like, yeah. I am necessary. I am you. Oh, I am, I am life. I am what? Uplifting. I, yeah. I, I, exactly. Yeah. That's how, yeah. when we, when, when we yeah. greet, when we greet and meet each other, first thing I think, in my opinion, what we should do is speak life into each other. Yeah. That's the beginning of our conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My opinion. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. I yes. completely agree with that. I actually like, I wish people would do that more. I, I've had people tell me, like, why are you always complimenting people? Like, what kind of question is that? Like, what? Question in the wrong that's, thing. That's bro. Sad. Like, you questioning <laughs> all of so we're not used to people complimenting each other. Like, oh, I'll talk to random people in the street. You know, I have the hardest time with like younger girls. 
Like, they'll look nice. And I'll be like, yo, sis, you look good. And then they'll be like, I'm like, okay. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, you would have thought I played you. Or like, yo, I really like that jacket. And it's always the young ones. They always have like this, like, it's young black girls too, which makes me really sad. And it's like, it makes me irritated and sad. I'm not going to lie. I get a little angry. Like, are you, are you serious, bro? Are you serious? Mm. Like you never had somebody tell you you look nice before. Take like, a compliment. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, again, mm. that's a trauma. So I've learned to, mm-hmm. it happened to me the other day. This girl had a lit jacket on. It had the word soul on it. I was like, you know, that's my word. So I was like, yo, sis, I like this jacket. And she just kept walking. Like she just, mm. I was like, yo, but this is what we do to each other, you know? But if I was an ignorant black girl, an ignorant older person, I would have cursed her out, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. I I went to Dollar Tree yesterday and I'm on the line and the lady, she just, she walks away, her cart is on the side, but I guess now she feels like she left her cart this when she's on the line. So I was like, you know, I'm not even, in that moment, like, you know, you're irritated, but I was like, you know, sis, I'm not even going to do this with you. Go ahead. Like, what am I going to do? Fight you and argue with you about a Dollar Tree line? Yes. yes. You it's choose so your weird. battles. Like, Absolutely. I don't want any of these battles. I don't want none of them. Look, mm. I don't, the only fight I'm fighting is a fight to keep Black people alive. And I don't want to fight. No, I'm not fighting my own person. Like, why am I fighting? You look like mm. me. Like, why am I giving you a heart? You look like me. Yes. I never understand how we treat each other bad. Like, we look like one another. Like, and I'm not going to lie, the female community has it. Like, we have it bad. Like, our relationship with one, like, like you see, I'm happy to see Black men feeling comfortable enough to just, like, appreciate and celebrate one another. And it's like, Black woman has a fake type of love like that. It's not real. It's not authentic. And I don't like it. And it's like, mm. I won't participate in it either. And it's like, be real, be authentic. Like, I'd rather you tell me to my face how you really feel about me versus in hearing it from five different people or when yep. you are talking about mm-hmm. me pulling me down or like I just want to say like and it's happening more and more now I see more people like building each other but then we still have the little click thing I I cannot I literally love the poetry mm-hmm. world because of that it's like I'm not doing this click I don't want to be a click I don't want to be in a click I I'm doing this because I want to I want to build as a whole I finally want to be a part of something where all black people can be together and connect together like Haitians believe in unity so like that's important you see five Haitians that never met each other but we get on the same block you would have thought we knew each other you know that's just it's just the vibe like I want that vibe I want to see people really just vibe out like that like I talk to everybody in my building like I used to live in the projects in East New York and people be like you my mom you know she's real Haitian so it's like don't talk to nobody in the hood okay and I'd be like mommy like no I'm talking to everyone but now they all know me I come on a block and they be like yo what's up but they talk to my whole family now too and it's like when you mm-hmm. I said what if god forbid mom you were coming home really late, late at night these are going to be the same men that's going to be outside is going to make sure you good so I'm going to be good with them these are my family like they be like yo what's up sis I be like yo what's up y'all good how's you doing today like we haven't seen you in a minute they're paying attention to like we haven't seen you in a minute that means they're looking for you and they yes. care enough like, come on we don't pay attention to like mm-hmm. let's I, go I love living in the hood I tell you East New York really gave me it, it taught me what family orientation really meant it really taught yes. me like what community meant like you know being with those like I love I I think the best thing God ever did was put me in the projects. I'm not gonna lie. That's my person. That's a ball, what you just said. That's a yeah. ball. That was a ball. Woo. And it makes perfect sense. That makes a perfect ball. sense. Yes. yes. Yeah. Makes perfect yes. sense. Absolutely. I uh mm-hmm. I, I know we're running out of time for you no, you're fine oh. you're fine um that's what just happened the person came to pick up when i was gonna go drop off so i had okay. to go i had to go to target before i left so my boyfriend went and took care of it for me so okay uh well See, how much time my great you... partner <laughs> yes I have sure. how... that's back from target i get way more and i'm in brownsville yes. so i'm sure we got some time let's get it okay so all right uh how do well, how can we feel because living in society today, especially in American society, of how, you know, how they built off our, you know, how they make money off of our uh, p- 
you know, misery, jobs and everything, nine to five and everything. Mm -hmm. But how can we feel whole as a people? This is for our listeners. So I, I, someone asked me this question. I, so yeah, how, how can we feel whole as a people? <clears throat> how do we feel whole as a people? Yes. Okay. One, I'm gonna tell you something. What belongs to you, no one can steal. They can mock it, they can try to remake it, but they can never steal you. And the biggest way to feel whole as a people is by starting with your own small community. It's let's not by go. trying to gather all black people together because let's be real. That's not realistic. That's not logical, you know? So start small, start from where you're at, start with, you know, who's around you building those honest relationships. We're not honest enough with one another. So if I would challenge you to become whole within your community, I don't know where you live, especially the person that asked a question. So let's say wherever you live, start with where you live. Like for me, I live in East New York, right? So I started in East New York. I started to build relationships with people in that neighborhood that I saw that wanted to make a similar difference than I did. And from those relationships, those relationships has extended my reach literally like into different boroughs or states, you know, and you would have to just really slow down and just really create that relationship with those around you so it could be in your household so are you having challenges at home are you struggling with the people in your house how can you create peace with those people first and foremost because if you can't create a stability in your home and you're it's harder for you to create outside of your home so first try to create some kind of peace i'm not telling you that the relationships are going to be perfect create a peace in that relationship then moving forward again that would help you learn how to have a relationship one with yourself and then other people and then when you get outside then you learn how to build with, with those around you i feel like to, to learn how to become whole honestly is to let go of the idea of we wanting to be a part of this society you are much higher than this society so i'm trying to be a part of a world that you are above like and i think that's where black people have has started to be getting mistaken themselves it's like we're trying to be a part of a government or a society or a world we are above that and yeah. once one or two or three people begin to recognize that and again it's like that's how we begin to create that forest i was talking about it's like get into that state of mind that garden of eden state of mind it's like you are not what you see around you. We say it, but do we, how can you actually see that in the physical? So, okay, I am not everything I see around me. So you're not the bank account. You're not the, you're not the job. You're not the school. Because let's, let's be real. At any moment, these things could change. Look how the COVID just changed our whole reality of how we operate and deal with things. So at any moment, the physical things that you see can change. But the one thing that would never change is who you are, who you are in the spirit. So if you're able to tap into your spiritual self, then you're able then now to see because your eyes now become open and you're able to recognize, right, the other people around you who carry that seed inside of them. And now you're able to create a better relationship. And that's how you start to feel whole. So only reason why I have any form of wholeness inside of me was creating vibrational energies, relationships that, cause God is a vibration. Okay. It's a vibration. You might not see him. You might not necessarily feel the vibration, but you know, it's present, right? So when the vibrate, when something is, when a force is moving behind you, it's pushing you, it's doing something, it's guiding you, it's doing something in your life. So you tap into that wholeness by trusting one and that force, that force that's like, go, go this way, do that. You trust in that and you start trusting in that, that's that garden of Eden state of mind. You are really above this world. You are above this world. I don't know how, that, like, I can't tell black people anything else. You are above this world, just how you are created. Just like, look at your physical self. Your physical self is already different. I don't question what's already be, it's like, I don't question what's facts, bro. That's how I deal with my life. You know how I stay whole? I don't question what's facts. Clearly black people are dope. Clearly we've done a lot of amazing things. Like facts after facts after facts, science prove it. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue facts. It's like, I don't argue with white people. Don't ask me to argue with white people. That's like, I don't, I don't hate them. Some, you know, I just, I just wrote my face. Like, <laughs> I don't hate Trump. I don't wish COVID kills him, you know, but 
spirit works, bro. And when spirit, you can't play spirit. It's why I don't argue with white people. When Trump was being blasphemous all those other months, I wasn't worried about him. I had never worried about Trump. Not one day. I don't even know how long he'd been in office. That's how much I don't worry about him, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't worry about him. Because when you begin to know you are higher and above, you will really move in that. Now educate yourself and educate those around you. We hold information for ourselves too much. We don't try to build with our own. We'll go give the white man the information before we give it to the black person. We will give yes. it to the white man for free. Who has the money? But then we'll charge our own for it. No, go teach each yes. other. Because how are you going to build an economy? How are you going to build a community if you're not willing to put your different trades together? Yo, bro, I, my, my goal, my goal for the, for next year is really studying different black, like business owners. Okay. Like women, men back in the history and just seeing how they created a change. I'm done with the talking. I'm not a person. I'm done with the talking. Like I'm in school right now. I'm studying criminal um, criminal um, criminal justice, and I really want to take that because I, I'm taking my classes seriously because I want to understand the data. I want to know who collects these statistics for crimes. I want to know who's doing all these different things so I can actually create my own theories. So because that, that's all they are, they are theologists, okay? So these theologists came and told me that this is facts, and now I'm gonna believe it. No, I am gonna become a theologist. I'm going to create my own theories, and I'm gonna change the world that I live in. And the only way for me to do that is by studying what's already in place and knowing how I can change it. It's like I'm taking earth science and it's teaching you about the galaxy and the universe. And I was like, who's to say these planets are not the heavens that the Bible are talking about? Who's to know? You don't know. But unless you be, you start to start thinking outside of the box and what you already were taught, then you'll begin to see the truth because there's nothing new under the sun, right? So if there's nothing new under the sun. Where is it residing? It's inside of you. It's inside of you inside of you so tap into yourself bro and i'm sorry when i hit a sun i'm not thinking about the sun and the sky i'm thinking about the the king okay the sun Facts. okay yes. so if there's nothing new under the sun because in the bible it says everything was created the light was there in the beginning but in if you move further on in the verse, God created the moon and the and the moon and the in the sun later on. So what light is he talking about? That sun, that kingship, okay? When you are under that kingship, there's nothing new under Jesus Christ. Nothing new under Jesus Christ. So if when you are under Yahweh, let's not use the 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 the, the Jesus because some people don't agree with that name, right? When you're under Yahweh, when you're under the kingship, there's nothing new under the kingship. So if there's nothing new under the kingship, where are you going to go? You could go wherever you want to go. You can manifest whatever God said. You could do greater than I ever done. Come on, Moses was out here parting seas, bro. I ain't doing nothing yet. I ain't doing nothing. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, bro. We can raise oh. people from the dead. I, I'm not limiting myself. God says you could do much, much more. Much more. Okay, I have greater power in me. Come on, bro. Who am I limiting myself? Nah, I would never. You cannot limit yourself. That's how you become whole. Stop limiting yourself, bro. Stop limiting, stop limiting yourself and knowing that black people, I'm sorry to say this. I don't care who's offended. I'm not sorry. I'm stop lying. I don't care who's offended. Let's keep it real. When you are black, know that you are above society. You are above the world, okay? And you can, we've literally changed everything that you see now. Iron, these fences, whatever you see, it's us. So if we could do all that, what mm -hmm. else can we do? They steal from us and then create things. But somebody stealing something doesn't mean they created it. They just stole it and remade it. You created it still. Yeah. Not because we worry so much about financial blessings is the reason why we're so stuck. We so focus on making money, we don't realize that we're being blessed in so many other ways that other people would never be blessed, okay? I can I tell you, I would take, so I would give away all the money that I've ever had in my life, okay? All of it. If I could just walk on this earth with a hundred billion people and we're all happy, I'll give it all away right now. I'll give it all away. But I don't know many people who's willing to do that because we're so focused on the money we can't see how to really become whole. Whole is about community. It's about sitting on a table and eating together. It's about it's about Miss Kimberly don't have it today, but Diamond has it. So we're having we're having we're having dinner at Diamond's house. It's about 
we can't buy clothes for the whole family, but TC just, just touch a million dollars. So he's about to buy clothes for the whole hood. Like that's what it's really about. It's not about, it's not about, it's not about all oh, my individual self. It's about how can you as an individual person really support the collective? How can we Give support it. the collective? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yo, let's go. Give it. Yeah. You heard that? Yeah. What? Yo. <laughs> Yo. Let's, let's, yeah. How, 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 um, how much time we have, uh, for you, Kim? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. You, you know, we, okay. we respect, we was definitely respect time. Oh, yeah. Um, TC. This is definitely true. And our people, our black people got to realize we are so above because we are so stuck on what society tells us how to live. And people forget we built this country. <laughs> we built this. It's technically mm -hmm. ours. And we had to keep telling ourselves, like, look, I'm not gonna let anybody tell me what to do. It's my life. Exactly. I totally believe yeah. I totally believe that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. How how, how can someone build a connection with God? Okay. Ooh, so building a relationship or a connection with God, you're going to have to figure that one out on your own. I always tell people that because you can't, how can I, how can you tell someone how to connect a relationship with God? It's really, let me tell you, when God is ready to find you, he's going to find you. Cause that's exactly what happened to me. Whenever somebody asked me, mm -hmm. how did I get this relationship with God? He found me like, he was speaking to me. I wasn't really listening. Like, so you're going to go through that. Anyone, everyone, if you're not ready for him, he says it's a free will to have a relationship with God. That's one. God does not force himself on you. He would just show up. And if you're ready to receive him, he will be more than open to, to dine with you, you know? Mm. So I'll ask mm. this, I, I'll answer this question with a question. What would it take for you to hear the voice of God? Like, it's not, it, that, that's, that's, what it, that's what's most important. What would it take for you to hear the voice of God? So if you're able to hear him, then you'll be able to create a relationship with him. So what I would mm. challenge you to do is to listen to that inner voice to see how that inner voice will want to create a relationship with you. I can't tell you how to build that connection. The only thing I could tell you is to listen for that connection. Yes. Yo, so <laughs> let's get basically, it. Basically, one way you could find out from what you said before, it's just being still. Being still. Once again, once mm. again. So being still is really the major key. To, to life, to man. Understand. Look, meditation. Um, I read this thing in um, in Oprah's magazine, whatever that book she has, or old, whatever. She has the magazine, okay? And you know Jarell Diamond, um, really? Yes. Okay, yes. so she had this book in her bathroom, and I just was in the bathroom reading this book, okay? And I would never forget. It says, Medi prayer without meditation is nothing. So you can pray all you want to, but if you're not meditating, you would never receive what you're praying for. Because it's like, mm. how, do you, how do you receive what you're praying for if you don't sit to hear it? Like, how do you receive it? Like, you have to really sit down to hear the voice of God. And when you're moving and you're rushing and you're going through your day-to-day, -day, do you really take the time to even listen to your own voice? Truthfully. Let's go. Like it's just, you're just on action mode. So when you really just slow down and listen, like you shouldn't make a decision without talking to God first. You know, like people, people has offered me some things that sounds like a blessing. But when I, cons when I, when I went to God and was like, consult him, he's like, no, not it. You know how many times God told me to leave my church that I was in and I just did not listen. And then when I finally left, it's like everything started to work out for me. He was telling me to go. The whole, he was telling me to go for a whole last year, October, bro. And it took me until August this year to do it. You understand? And the moment I did it, everything in my life shifted. That's, it's, it's about listening. Like literally it's about just sitting down and trusting. Cause I was like, I don't know what the voice of God sound like. He sounds like you. That's what he sound like. He uses mm. your own voice the same way he's going to use TC voice, the same way he's going to use Diamond's voice. He just uses our voice. It's us. He, he speaks through us. He doesn't need a special, he doesn't need to use a donkey to speak to us again. And like we're always waiting for some special crazy miracle to happen to hear the voice of God. It's mm. like, man, when you were sitting in the bathroom, you was taking a shit. That was him telling you to go and, you know, pay that bill. So, you know, your phone don't get cut. That was him. 
you know, but we're just waiting for this special moment to be in church in front of an altar or we're waiting like, bro, when you was waiting for that light to change green and you heard, you know, like call your mom, that was God. And you called your mom and she's like, yo, I was just thinking about you. Like that was God. Like, it's like you're, we're waiting for such special moments. I, I was waiting for such a special moment. I kept trusting more in the pastors and all the people that was teaching me. Like I didn't have enough of him inside of me. And God was like, yo, Kim, first off, stop it. Because before you ever walked into a church, before you really started reading the Bible, you already knew me. You knew more about me than a lot of the people in this church. I read the Bible every day. So stop mm. it. Stop it. Now I do want you to read my word. I want you to understand what I'm trying to say to you. I want to show you what you knew already. I want to show you why you knew it. You know, that's all like for me, that's what reading the Bible is really knowing what I knew already. It's like, this is why I knew this information. This is where God was trying to take me again, because you are the Bible. That's another thing I believe, but look, don't take me on that. Okay. Because I don't want y'all going home. I don't know if y'all got pastors. Don't go tell them I told y'all that. Cause I don't know that's fast. <laughs> It's just something that I truly believe. I believe that the word is Christ. And if I believe in Christ and I believe in the word, and when it tells me to read the word, I need to be able to read the spirit of Christ and just knowing what that spirit means. So like, I don't know, like, cause the Bible has, you know, I, so I speak Creole and I know translation really changes stuff. Like once I, somebody tell me something in Creole and I translate it in English, I take like seven words out just because it's like Haitians do too much. Like, we say all these extra words that might be a little bit unnecessary in English. It's like when you speak in slang, bro, like from regular English to slang, like how many words you'd be taking out? Like 10, you know, you got like yeah. five letters left. Like, come on. Yeah. But then the person mm. understands you. They understand every word that you're saying. Mm. So it's like, yes. understand the energy and read it for what it is. Like, I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm in this place in my life right now where I feel like God is trying to show me the, like, stop looking at, like, you know, I was looking at God like a person so much, a lot, honestly. I was looking at him like a physical thing, not like what he really is, not the energy that he is. And now when I'm studying about the stars and, like, um, a young star is filled of gas and a star that has no gas in there is a star that's formed, that's, like, filled, like formed. And it's like, damn, like, God, I know, I don't know, but I know you're trying to tell me something. There's a meaning to that. You know, there's a reason why people are, st are studying the universe. And there's a reason why science, there's a reason why the enemy separated science and God. Like, there's a reason. Because there's no way the two don't go hand in hand. Like, because if you created everything and we're studying that everything, how wouldn't that everything be about you ultimately? You know, like, and you giving us a space and the ability to study it. Like, there's a reason why you're giving us this ability. Like, we didn't have to be able to build spaceships. Like, we didn't have to be able to do any of these things, but we're doing it. Like, and there's a reason. Like, so I, I, I challenge you if you're into the STEM, if you're into science, like, and you like God, yo, try to figure out a way to see how God exists in the universe. And people are praying to the universe daily and people hate when people tell them they can't do that, maybe you can, maybe somebody can help break that shift. Maybe there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know, you know, but there's only one way to find out is by somebody actually studying and connecting the, to the, the two that seem so separated. Let's get it. Three more questions. Three more questions I have for you. And then if, if we have enough time, then it's uh, TC will take it away. Um, mm -hmm. The next question I have for you, let me just pull it up. Oh, this, okay. So, in the God did not create me for no reason video. Uh, if it's, it's up to you, if you want to share this, uh, if you don't mind. I remember you said in the past, you come from a broken home. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you transition? from the person that you are and who, and for the listeners that, um, that comes from their broken home or uh, people from the front, you know, that has a past, how can they transition from who they are in the present today? It is so interesting because I was sitting in a park yesterday and I knew you were going to ask me this question. Like, I just, I literally, like, I knew it. 
And this is the answer that I'm going to give to you because this is what I heard inside of myself. So I've been, as you also know, during that time, I was trying to write a book. And that's, that's, the, that's the baseline of the book. It's about, um, and I'm still trying to write this book, but God just spoke to me about that yesterday. And okay, so a broken home, right? So what I thought was a broken home. I came oh, from a household where being who I was wasn't really something that was accepted. Like being Haitian, being extremely happy, they look at you like, like, like basically I'm being fake, right? But I literally been the same person my whole life. So my family thinking I'm being fake really made me fuck. I was, I was being fake. Like, because you see me like this growing up since I've been young until now, and somehow it's not authentic, you know? So that's what started to make me feel broken. So it's, it's the little things, the voices, the things people would say to you in your household that would start to yes. make you kind of belittle you as a person and the challenges that I would have with that. But like I was stating earlier, I had to begin to realize like my relationship with my, um, with my mom. You know, she would say things that's very hurtful, but then she's from Haiti. Like, she don't know no better. Like, some days I tell mom, you don't, like, now I could be like, you just don't know no better. Like, but I'm not accepting this from you either. And I would tell her, like, I stopped talking to my mom. I would do stuff like that. Like, when she can't respect my space, I won't talk to her. And I'd be like, you can't call me, don't talk to me, because you don't respect who I tell you I want to be. And if you can't respect that, there's no reason why we're going to communicate. I understand you're my mom, but my health is important to me. And you're not messing with that. I speak to my mom like that, because there was a point I was allowing her to mess with my mind and my heart. And I was so unhappy. And so now I just tell people, look, bro, you're not making me happy. Like this does not make me happy at all. When you do this, it makes me unhappy. And my, I'm not the best at it. There's times I still struggle with that, like on the outside. Right. But like with my family, I've gotten really good with that. Like with my brothers, you know, I have open and real conversations with them. I've set boundaries with them that I didn't have before. So I really started setting boundaries with the people in my life that really helped me with my broken, like my, all my broken situations. And listening to my own trauma, like I really was just like, I'm in a lot of pain. Like I had to be honest, like when I stopped doing poetry, you know, when I stopped working, it's like when I stopped doing poetry, that was one period of my life when I was going through a lot, right? the experiences that I had, what I expected to get out of poetry, what poetry had meant to me, writing and performing became two different things. And then, so I went into a, I went with a whole breakdown and I was just like falling apart. Then I got back up and I started to work and doing certain things. At that period of my life, I wasn't working also, interesting enough. So I know for me, I need, I need to be feeling my purpose consistently, you know? So like, what what's like what is it about your home that's making you feel like it is broken like you like you got to ask yourself certain questions like you know what what has been said to me that makes me feel less than you know like and are you actively like I actively like make an effort to go to um I would like I'll go for a walk, you know, I would like just make sure I talk like again, I talk to myself a lot. Like I used to think that made you crazy. But I really just be like, yo, Kim, like, what what would it take for you to just breathe again? What would it take for you to just be happy? Like what, like, what is it about the situation that makes you unhappy? You know, and the more I'm honest with myself, the more I start to be like truthful, like right now, it's like with my current situation, it's like, I'm grateful, but I want more. So because I want more, it's like now I'm going to just make every effort that I can to get that more. So when your household is broken and you want to see more from that, you're going, you're going to make every effort that you can make to make it better. You know, it's oh. not about, it's not about, again, it, I didn't say, oh, mommy, oh, you know, she was talking bad to me. And I was just like, oh, I love you still. I love you, mommy. No, I was like, uh-uh, you're not going to talk to me like that. Same thing with my brother, the same thing with my sisters, same thing with my nephew, like, he, my nephew is 10. Okay. And I hold him accountable. I'd be like, Adrian, when you act like this, I don't like that. So you're not going to talk to me until you check it. Same thing with me. When I know I'm angry or upset, I'll let my mom know right now I'm upset and I'm angry. So whatever's about to come out of my mouth is about to be nasty. Please excuse me. I'll talk to you later. I'll come back when I'm in a better place. That's just me being like, we have to be honest about where we're at. Cause God says be angry, but sin not. So God didn't tell me I couldn't be mad. My God told me be angry. Just don't sin. So excusing myself was me not sinning like I got to go like so you know God really gives you the permission to like look feel how you feel 
just don't 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 respond based on how you feel unless it's positive you know but you know honestly even that could get you into trouble so you know that that really feel good moment you know people people get into some really bad situations that they don't want to be in because of that feel good moment um, oh. you know we online so i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it pg-13 somebody kid might be walking in. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, and then um, last question, and then yeah, uh, we would. Uh, how can we, you know, follow you social media um, and everything? Now, when COVID hit, that's when the world shut down and everyone was quarantined. So while that happened this year, what did you learn while everyone and the whole world was? quarantine well god had me quarantined a whole year before that i had no job i was already covid okay my whole mm. life covid was like the reflection of my life it's like the whole world just joined me like oh guys welcome yeah. to the boat like it's lit over here right no i know i know it's not that lit i know i know you know that's how covid was for me honestly like covid just showed the truth of the truth like covid didn't show me no different i'm sorry black people our lives did not really shift covid did not shift nothing for us okay that was a ball, already, uh, that was a ball. We Thank you. already struggling Thank you. you know like no. let's be real like the black community like i think the most thing that probably took us by shock was the number of deaths we were but i mean yes. even that yeah. Even that, like, honestly, is something that we were dealing with, you know. I remember we were talking about this at work, and I was like, y'all got to think these kids, like, you know, yeah, they're still online, they're laughing, and they're smiling. They're so used to trauma. This is nothing new to them, like, you know, like, and people are wondering why kids are not signing on online. Like, I only went to after school because I didn't want to be home. Like, why am I gonna, I'm home. I don't want to be in after school online. Like, let's be real about what, what's going on. Black people, I'm going to be real, like, I feel like we were prepared for these kind of, like, traumatic experiences, you know? We've been going under trauma for so long. It's almost part of our genes. Like, literally, I feel like this point, like, trauma lives in us. It's part of who... Hello? Yeah, we saw, yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kimberly, hold on. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. She's still connected. So. Yeah, she is still connected. All right, just give it. I, I give it a second. Give it a moment. Connection. Oh, oh she, Sorry. Yeah, she's. I love connection. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, right. there we go. And I'm back. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, hold up, y'all froze. Like, <laughs> but yes, definitely. Like, I okay, feel like we, we have yes. to readjust ourselves. We've been we've been able to readjust ourselves because of our trauma, which has literally given us. You guys can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, just, we can hear you. Okay, but. We have to learn like, okay, look, black people, we've adjusted through so much. We're gonna continue adjusting and we're gonna continue coming, overcoming. But I'm gonna tell y'all something, it might sound insensitive, but this is how I look at it. Bodies are gonna drop, okay? It's part of life. Mm -hmm. Those who are to stay are gonna remain. But now we have to understand what our positions are because now we can't just be staying behind just to stay. We have to get that revolution, that revolution spirit again, but not just a revolution spirit. I want that evolution. Spirit. I don't believe in revolting because I feel like a revolt is like somebody charging you to do something, right? It's like, ah, ah. but I feel like when you're evolving, it's like a constant moment of growth. So something that I would, I would challenge people to do, let's create a, let's create a new movement. Let's stop trying to revolt. Let's stop trying to march. Let's evolve with each other. Let's really connect and see how that, how that would look. So like, if you really want to build on something like that, you know, like, let's create that network. That's where my purpose is at. It's like, how can we create a network where people are able to evolve together? Like, I'm not skilled at everything. Like, I hate math, bro. I don't want to build shit, okay? I don't want to build <laughs> nothing. Don't give me a computer. Don't I give me a <laughs> I don't want to do it. But I would market it. I will go and tell everyone about it. That I would do. I love doing that. 
that's that's my strength so it's like like how can we create i want yo i want i really want to see the next black wall street bro like that's like before i die and i close my eyes that's my dream i would love if i have to create it myself if i could get a gun to my head for it i would do it like i would die for this cause and i and i believe like for me that's what makes me feel like I, that stands me apart. I would die for, for my, for my culture. I would die for being black. And I really mean that. Like I would, I would die behind my people. Like, you know, I would die for what I believe is right. I would die for this justice. Like I believe that I am going to obtain it, even if it means my, this physical body being left behind because I'm bigger than this physical body. My spirit would always, always be living. Like I would, like, I believe in my eternal self. So because I trust that I'm going to have that eternal life, I don't care about this. This is nothing. Like I'm doing what I have to do. Jesus, Jesus got nailed. A, 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 a bullet ain't gonna be nothing. Okay. They put nails in that man's hand and his foot. Okay. He was bleeding. They left him there. Okay. He was ah, in pain. Okay. And he evolved. Okay. That's what resurrection was. He evolved into another level. I'm trying to evolve like Jesus out here. Okay. Mm. So we're going to have to create this evolution. So if, that's how, that's what we got to do. Create an evolution because COVID ain't do nothing to black people. Mm. Okay. We were dying anyways. We were killing each other. We was doing a whole lot of stuff was killing us. So, so Talk what we to need to do is to understand things are happening, bro. Things happen every day. If you stay on the things that's happening, you're never going to get to where you need to go. Like can't bring back anyone that's gone already i it breaks my heart that we lost so many people i lost people that i love you know they're in the midst of covid but that's not gonna stop me like those people also taught me a lot like one of the ladies that i lost i loved her she taught me a lot she was the reason why i kept going to my church you know and she left and i had for me i had no more reason to go back like she gave me everything that i needed like i like you know, so her life to me wasn't lost because I know for me, I took something away from it. She was out here feeding people in East New York. I've never met a church person, like an island church person who really sat down and just started their own food thing and like didn't just do it for their people. She did it for the people, the drug addicts, bro. That was dope. That's, that's the kind of people I like. Okay. Yes. Like those kind of stuff really inspired me and they touched me. Like I'm telling you this lady, sister Claire, like she would forever live on in my heart. Okay. And like what she, what she did in East New York, I'm sure it would forever live on in those people. I mean like good food, not like cheap. She was making them barbecue, chicken, rice, salad, macaroni. Uh -huh. cheese. Eh, 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 exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She was making, um, making chow mein, like you guys spending her own money. She wasn't getting help from the government. She was making, she was using her income to do this. That's beautiful. Okay. That's like that's, that, that's what I care about. It's like COVID didn't take anything, nothing. Okay. If you pay attention to what's important, which is the spirit and what that spirit has left you and you'll be able to go anywhere. So COVID didn't, they didn't, they didn't do nothing in my life. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just. <laughs> I feel you on that one. It's true. Let's get it. COVID hit, Let's and I was just like, oh. Why Anywhere not? a mask. That's it. Like, the mask thing is the major thing for myself. Because I could feel you on that part when you said COVID really didn't hit you because you wasn't working and stuff. I was on working compensation the year before. Yeah, mm. I was getting paid, but I really couldn't do much. So I was home just like this. Already. Time. <laughs> exactly. So when COVID hit, Everybody's like, oh my god, I gotta stay home. Y'all like, chill, like, yeah, bro. <laughs> right? I'm gonna like, get you all good. Right? Right? Just grab a pot, make some spaghetti. I don't know. Right? Wow! Like, where yes. do people forget to struggle? Like, <laughs> I, yo, I love the yo. I grew up in the struggle, and I love the struggle. Like, I really do. My mom, bro. Like, yo, let me tell you, I love, I love that lady. Okay, she would make. She will eat, yo, my, let me say, matter of fact, my sister, she would take bread, butter, and onion, and toast it, and we would eat that jump off. It was good, okay? Hey. Like, we learned how to survive. It's like, people don't know how to survive anymore. No, they and don't. Without survival skill, what if everything just blow up, bro? I always think about that. This is the reason why I kind of make myself struggle for no reason sometimes, okay? I'd be like, what if it was the end of the world, and I had nothing. I'm going to go start from, I'm going to start myself for three days to see if I'll be able to survive. I'm that person. Like, I just be preparing myself for the oh. end of the world. 
just because oh, you just don't know. I want to see how strong I am, like mentally, like, am I able to go days without something? Like, that's why I'm not attached to my phone. Look, I just got a new phone, right? Uh -huh. I did not get a flagship phone. I went, I was like, what's the cheapest phone that I could get? I was like, I'm not spending seven, eight, nine. I don't need to do that. That's ridiculous. Like that doesn't that's make sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. That's not where my investment is going to go into anymore. Matter of fact, I didn't even know they were flagship phones, bro. I was like, I didn't need nothing flagship this whole time. If y'all told me this, I would have never bought it. And if I knew there was regular phones and then flagship, give me the regular one. I need everything regular, 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 regular. Okay. Like yeah. say we are investing, we invest too much. We complain about a society we invest in daily. We need the newest this, the newest that. Bro, give me what I need to work and do what I got to do. Maybe all you need is a freaking the farming thing and you go and plant. But you think you need an iPhone. You probably don't even, you didn't even need the iPhone. You could have bought like 50 seeds, hmm. some water. I'm just, I'm just saying, look, I say yeah. this to me about my own addictions, you know, like things that I know that I invest a lot of money in. And I'm just like, damn, I could have used that money. I could have bought like kids that are around me that want to paint. I could have went to the store and got them something to paint with. Like, these are the things I talk to myself about. It's like, look, we spend money on things that's not necessary. How can, this is how we become whole. That person that asked that question, I really fucks with you. Like, I'm about to go find you on Facebook and add you, okay? Because <laughs> that's how we stay whole, bro. That's how we stay whole. It's, it's, we invest in dumb stuff all the time. Like, I don't want, I don't need the Uggs. I don't need the Uggs. They're like, they're like too much money. I don't even know how much it costs because I don't buy the Uggs. Isn't it like $300? I don't Something know. Like it's that? too much yeah, it's money. About, it's it's you know? about, yes. So, you about. see, so, I can't get behind that. I can't. <laughs> if my sneaker so I, is... Mm. I bought me some shoes, some Skechers, okay, for like 30 bucks. It was on sale, bro. And them shoes is the warmest hey. shoes I've ever put on my feet. And they're comfortable. Uggs are not even comfortable. And they're too hot. What about the Ugg slippers? I asked this girl, I was like, why you guys buy these Ugg fur slippers? Are you, is your feet cold or hot? Because I'm confused looking at you. Oh, you're talking about those colorful fur slippers? Yeah. That's like math fuzzy? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's a slipper. It. And then she's like, no, it actually keeps your feet cool. You're lying to me. Because I wear leggings during the summer and I'm hot. Talk to him. Talk to we him. Money, we spend money just to, like, look good. I, I can't do that. Like, I, I try to teach young... I, like, I like working with high school kids. Because I'd be like, let me tell y'all something, okay? You spend money on all these useless things. I wish somebody told me, like, I used to spend money in the club all the time, okay? I used to love going out, and I love being lit. So there's no way he's going to catch me in the club, and I ain't have a drink in my hand. I needed my drinks, and I needed my splits, okay? That was me, like, in the club. Like, I wasn't dancing, okay? I don't know why I went to the club, honestly. I was just there getting drunk and smoking. I could have did that shit at home. So I had, I had to have the money to get in, and then I would pay for my friends, bro. And I'm like, yo, like, you know how rich, you know how much a drink in the club costs? You know, fish yes. I was buying them fish balls. I'm thinking like $60 per person. Okay. Those days, though. And then you needed a new outfit <laughs> and new shoes for the party. I would have, I could have had a house. Like, I could have had a yeah. house. I could have been running art <laughs> programs. Like, you know what I could have been doing? And it's like, I didn't even like partying. I was just there because all my friends was there. Like, and they wanted me to be there with them. Like, can you imagine just going somewhere because other people wanted you to be there because you're lit? Like, I should have had them coming out places with me. I was fucking up. Fucking up. Like, like lost a lot of money, bro. Like, and I had a great job. Like, I was working in a juvie home. Like, I was, for my age, I was making really great money. I didn't have to pay no bills. I was in a good place. But you. I just didn't know those different like aspects of responsibility. So I teach kids that like, yo, let me tell you, I know you want that them Jordans, but let me tell you something for real though. Like, what do you like to do? Okay. Boom. You like to make music. Can I tell you something? If you invest this 10, $20 into your music, 
let's just say weekly, bro. Do you know that you could end up making money from your own music? Like you can become your own business person. Like I would tell them, I wish somebody told me that. So I'm not in this position. I don't now look at my students. I don't want you to be broke like me. I don't want you doing this job. I love working with y'all. Don't get me wrong, but I only love working with y'all. So y'all don't end up like me. And so that our community can go somewhere. I don't want Please. you to look at how it looks. I only do this job because I know that if I do it, I, somebody else will have a better life than I did. And that's all I care about. I used to tell my kids like, oh, I don't do this job for money. I think they, they thought I was lying. I mean, how often do people come into your schools and tell you that, right? But then I would come to work on my day off and they'd be like, yo, Miss Kim, you really like, you, do you really like us this much? And I'd be like, y'all I folks, y'all live up the block for me. Of course I like you, okay? I need, let somebody mm. call me and tell me one of my kids is acting up. Who, what? I don't care if it's my day off. I'm there. I don't need to get paid. Let me tell you something. I'm volunteering today, okay? I'm going to volunteer, like, because I need you to do what you need to do. I don't need you. I lost a student working at my school. He got shot, and I promised myself I never want to lose another kid by gun violence or any kind of violence. Mm -hmm. And I remember speaking to him that day, like, yo, just... Like, yo, what's going on with you, bro? Something is up. And I just felt like if I just stood there, like if you just participated more in people's lives, you know, and I remember with him, I felt like it wasn't my place to talk to him because he already had a youth counselor. And it's like, no, whoever God places in your heart, you got to do the work because you could save a life, yo. And that, that moment really taught me that I could have saved a life if I just, if I just in the moment just did what I was supposed to do versus worried about jealousy and all these other things that were y'all want to help anybody help the younger kids y'all i'm telling y'all all of us need to pick one person that's younger than us to mentor like i have a bunch of younger kids that i keep around me from the ages of from like the age of 10 all the way to like 19 21 you know like just because i want to see them become better like i add a lot of my old students on facebook so that they could see the different things that i do so I could, when i'm sharing things that they're able to be exposed to different things it's like we are, we allow jobs to limit us from connecting to our children. Like we let so many things limit us from connecting to people. These white people pay us to work in our communities, but then try to limit us on how we can connect with people that look like us. Like miss me with it. I'll lose <laughs> a job any that. day. Miss me with that. Miss me with that. Yes. Huh? <laughs> Yo, but please, let, please, whatever, please. I, this goes for our listeners. She is dropping gems right now. Please yep. to get a pad, get a paper. She's dropping gems right now for what she's saying. He's pretty pleased. Yo, keep yo. I we can hear you. I a thousand percent we can hear you talk all day. Oh, uh, hopefully I start my podcast soon and you can hear me all day. You know. <laughs> You know, because you could ask Diamond TC. I was I really, remember I was really out here one all the time on YouTube or Instagram, just like sharing stuff. And then depression and anxiety would really make you feel like you have nothing to say. And I do want to start that again, but I'm, I'm taking my time. But this was really fun. I had an amazing time with you guys. Absolutely. This was great. So Absolutely. Yes, yes. TC, it's all on you. Take it away. Boy. Yes. Hold on, TC. Like, give me five seconds. <laughs> talking to somebody. Somebody right. bothering. Right. You looking at them like you don't see me doing something? Nah, you. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's take it away. It's all on you. I'm. I'm questions are all good for me. You know, the last thing I just want to say what you just spoke about. Financial literacy is very important for our community. I do believe that. Yes. And by you speaking those jewels, I hope people really learn from what you're saying because it's so important. Yes. It's so important. Like versus like buying Jordans, which cost some of them six hundred dollars. Like, what's the purpose? Bro. The only reason only way I buy Jordan that costs six hundred dollars if it cooks me dinner. Bro. 15 cents at That's the, it. Fifty cents to the make only the way food. I'm wearing Jordans if Jordan send me a box of free Jordans. Okay. Basically. I ain't wearing it. Unless they pay me, I don't want it. Them shoes mess up your feet, bro. <laughs> mm -hmm. you shoes I never that a pair, so. I'm Let good. me tell you, the first pair of Jordans I had was because my mentor owned a Botanica, right? And I like did some work for her and she gave me a pair. I went right back and returned them to her. 
And it was oh, I and wow. I always I really wanted those Jordans. I always really really wanted them. But they were they were, my feet was hurting. I said, "Ain't no shoes worth my feet hurting this bad. Take your shoes back. I don't want it. I don't want it. I want my feet. I need my feet. I don't even want them. I need them." Like Yeah. <laughs> And it's the crazy thing is people buy them, but they don't even play ball in it. It's basketball shoes. Bro. They don't even use it for its purpose. No. Bro. Mm-mm. Why do you play basketball in them shoes? Them shoes hurt. They lie. That's <laughs> false marketing. Them shoes. Let me tell you my favorite shoes. I low key. I love me some, um, what is this? Oh, new balance, bro. I have these new balance sneakers. I love, oh my God. I'm about to show you guys. Okay, my shoes, I love these shoes. They're old. First of all, they are secondhand, right? But these shoes right here, okay? Mm-hmm. These are oh. the best shoes ever. They're mad comfy, and they were free, guys. I paid nothing for it. Kim, explain for uh, the, nice. the listeners uh, for mm-hmm. that's just listening to the audio. Oh, I don't even know the name. What is it? I think this is, I don't know. I told you I don't know nothing about shoes. It's Adidas. Look, I'm telling you. Look oh, it's Adidas. Adidas. Okay, I said, okay, Adidas. <laughs> Adidas. Is that the three That's stripes? Nice. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. They're called they're called Torsions or T O R S I O N. Yes. Okay, these are the most. Matter of fact, I know somebody else that used to own them, and she was like, "I wore mine's out." I mean, like them shoes is so, like if you're buying shoes, buy comfortable shoes. Okay, and this is my final. I want to say one last thing, guys. Okay, mm-hmm. make sure y'all drinking y'all teas. Okay, y'all wearing y'all masks because mm-hmm. y'all know them COVID rates are going back up. And yes. cut down on the eating of the meat and the fried foods if we can. Please. Yes, just just yes. a slight diet change could really keep you alive. You have kids, family members who are waiting to see you the next day, and like I just told my mom the same thing. I'm just encouraging you guys to just be healthy, drink some ginger, cut up some onions, chew some onions, bro. It might be disgusting, but it might save your life. And then especially if you have older people in your house, please, I don't believe in taking the flu shot. So I'm not going to encourage y'all to do that. But there are things that would keep the flu away. I don't know if you guys know Paris Williams, but she has um, these mango sea moss, bro. Y'all could go buy some of that. That would keep y'all, because sea moss really keeps your body healthy. And it tastes good. She has that. It's, I don't know what it tastes like. I'm telling y'all, it tastes good. I'm about to buy me one, because it look good. Let me say that. But she has that and a berry one. Like, definitely get y'all elderberries. Do what y'all got to do. You know, like, Diamond, if you could do a podcasting on, like, on some health, like, connecting people oh, yes. some people we that on that. definitely mm-hmm. share you some i would share some people that i know that are definitely on that wave especially right now connecting with those people as early as possible would be very important like this um geneva she she does like something called high high vibrational bar and she does um oh. inspiration quotes too so you two should definitely hook up like oh, let's go you know let's like go. let's I, I would love build the that. health yes Yes, that's, my last, that's my last thing because I, I want people to take this COVID thing. Like, I don't joke with it. Like, you know, I do believe that I can overcome it, but I'm not a, I'm not a fool. So I'm still yeah. doing what I got to do to make sure I stay good, you know. So buy turmeric is really good for inflammation. So yes. get some turmeric if you can. You know, I do yep. turmeric, ginger. I do the um, I, apple cider vinegar. That's really good. Yeah. I'll take a cap. I'll take some lemon. Like this is some of the stuff that I do, but my mom be going ham. Like, so I'm going to get some recipes from her. I'll send it to you, Diamond. You can share it with the people. Absolutely. I yes. don't want to see nobody dying. Of course. We, it, on this podcast, the first thing, the first thing we talked about was health. The yeah. first yeah. thing yeah. we yeah. talk about is health. Mm-hmm. The, our introduction is just about health because we know how important important it is for our health yeah yes everything you're doing is about health though absolutely yeah i mean we just had a whole conversation about how we can stay healthier spiritually that was amazing yes you guys really challenged me i really like the questions you asked were really amazing thank you like no thank you for thank you for yeah thank you thank you seriously for all of us being together because yes I wouldn't have been able to be this great if you guys weren't as great as you were. So I give thanks to the higher being for allow for moving through each and every one of us today because this was it's a blessing. 
That's it. It really it was. was. I feel like I went to church and back. Like, <laughs> you know, when you go to church and you stay after the service? That's what I felt like I just did. I went to church and I stayed after the service talking to the pastor afterwards. Like, girl, tell me some more what you were telling me about. Like, <laughs> yes. how, how social media, how can we follow you? How Facebook, um, Instagram, everything. Facebook is my name, Kimberly, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, last name Antoine, A-N-T-O-I-N-E. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Soul Servant. That's S-O-U-L, Servant, S-E-R-V-A-N-T. Um, right now, I'm actually off social media for a little bit, kind of fasting off, especially Instagram, because ain't nothing going on on there. Um, I'm still on Facebook though, because I get a lot of inspiration from Facebook. So you could definitely connect with me on Facebook a lot more. Um, you can always follow me on YouTube at sacred devotions. I haven't been posting on there, but I will be starting to post very soon. So if you want to know about what I have going on when it comes to my book or just the different theories or theologies, I say that I want to come up with, I would definitely be sharing those on my Sacred Devotions um, podcast. But if y'all want to do anything for me, really, 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 if y'all really enjoy this, y'all want to do anything, please support my friend Diamond Cash and buy these lit ass <laughs> shirts and these socks, okay? No. Buy my lit socks, okay? If y'all want to, I have nothing to sell y'all right now. But y'all can support me by supporting Diamond Cash. Okay, he got shirts. He got water jugs. What else you got, Diamond? He got socks and he got masks. He got your mask for you for the winter time. Your skin is thick and it keeps your face nice and warm. Diamond going to come out with the scarves next. Okay, so if you need scarves, he takes requests. He'll make a special Absolutely. one for you. Okay, whatever you want. He makes sweatpants, sweaters. There Look at the go. water jugs. Come on. And yes, it's glass. So you know when yes. you put the water in it, the water stay healthy. Come on. Not none of that yes. plastic shit. That's that good shit. Got that good, good. Yeah. Cop, uh, wow. cop some merchandise. That's what you could do for me. Okay. Yeah. That's my spill. I'm done. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> thank you. Thank yo. Thank you for that. I'm going to be oh, working man. for it. When Diamond opens his store, I'm going to be his first employee, guys. <laughs> Oh, no. Right in the front. It's, I'm selling speak, everything. I'm selling the life. whole store. First day. I'm selling speaking the whole store. <laughs> Damn, you better remember that. I'm selling the whole what? store. So I'm, I'm, I'm I, I already be, I, if Diamond sent me some merchandise right now, I'll be selling them right here in the hood. He playing with me. <laughs> ask what happened last How many time. you need? How many you need? I'm playing, <laughs> Diamond. Look, I'm going pictures <laughs> right now. I don't even need them. Just send me some photos. I'll be like, look, buy my buy my friend socks, okay? I talk to a random person. You need some socks? Yes. <laughs> like, not because, you know, like, it's like them kids that day. They were mad hype after that show because of the mask, bro. Yo, Diamond Gates, yo, he donated some stuff to our camp. Because, oh, see, that's what I didn't talk about, right? Because I'm part of a camp. Yes. Talk about that. Yes. And, Woo. you know, Really, we're, so we're starting this camp in East New York to just reach like, you know, from the K to eight grades and just really teaching them, giving them the being there for parents in the midst of COVID mm -hmm. and giving the support that might be needed. And, you know, Diamond came, he was, he was a photographer and videographer for our show and he donated some stuff so we can, um, um, what you call it, raffle off. And I don't know. I didn't feel like raffling them off. Right. So I'm a kind of person I'll follow whatever my spirit told me in that moment. So there was these young men and they were like, you know, I, one of them didn't have a mask and he was like, Oh, I want a mask. And I was going to give him the little blue jump offs Cause we had a bunch of those and something was like, yeah. nah, give him one of diamonds mask. So I gave him a mask and both his friends came like, yo, you got any more of those? <laughs> and I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I said only because these were because I really wanted to sell it to them as hype as they were, right? But I was like, nah, yeah. these were for the raffles anyway. So I was like, you know what? I said I'm gonna give it to y'all, but y'all make sure y'all connect with my boy Diamond and keep promoting him. I hope they promoted you that day, cause yes, I'm gonna have to talk I've... to them. <laughs> right, I'm yes, gonna have to talk to them. Okay. Yes. And then we gotta do something with that sock video. I'm still waiting. I should have seen that on your Instagram already. No, no, the socks is coming. Socks is definitely coming. Yo, yes. and we did a whole, and I'm telling you, and our dancer that's part of the camp did a whole, like, dance with his socks on. Yes. Wow. Yes. Seriously, yes. That's <sighs> plenty of facts. Let's see. That was a beautiful, that was so beautiful. It yes. was so much fun. 
So yeah. yeah, so I want Diamond to become very rich and I really love, I just love what his stuff says. It's like, come on, yes. Like the sock, what did it say? Something about ri- raising from the ashes? I refuse to turn my vision to ashes. Yo, bro! <laughs> and then, he was like lifting his feet. That shit was too lit. Like, and it's like, come, divine, 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 like divine, bro. It's like when he gave me my shirt, it was yellow. Like, come on. Yes. That just expressed all of me, like bright yellow, mm. crazy. I'm like a Starburst, bro. Like all under the rainbow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Please make sure y'all follow Kim. Please. Yes. Any actually any consultations, questions, anything that y'all need, please follow Kim. I'm telling y'all. Like, yes. Uh, yes. You don't know how. Like. I was, me and TC so was uplifted since the beginning mm-hmm. of this podcast. You guys definitely made my day. I really appreciate it. Like, I definitely give things to like, yes. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited to see, please. I, I want to um, send me the link. I want to check out some of the other episodes. Like, yes. The one about that one. Yes. I want to Absolutely. And, and yes. I got I don't I'm not even following this um what is it? Is this on Anchor? The, yes, the this is on Anchor. Anchor. Yeah, send me Anchor. all the yeah. send me all the links so I can start adding you, bro. You <laughs> slip. Kathy, we got you. We got you. Yeah, yeah, we got you. You should have been, yes. you should have been in my inbox every day, like on Messenger, like promote this. Like because yes. if I don't know, that means you're not promoting it enough. Like promote it, like all please right. spread the word. Ooh, like, old, don't be yes. afraid to that. like don't be afraid to let people hear what you got going on because this is amazing. Like I had fun. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's like one person that listens, you know, like I, I don't go to class online when it's on, but I always go back and rewatch it. So, yes. you know, it's not about who's on in the moment. It's about who's being touched. Like, this is really good. Please spread the word. Like, I really want to follow you guys. I want to get the little ding, you know, when <laughs> I do that, when I really like something, I, I do that. I want to see it. Like, I want, mm. that's why I could tell you what people are doing. Like, that's why I could tell you like Paris has CMOS. I like, I star people. Like, I like y'all. I don't care. I, it's like, it's not about the relationship someone has with you. It's what you see beneficial in them and how you can celebrate it. Like, you know, like, please look. I'm not <laughs> look at I, I, was, I was waiting for you. I felt like you should have been sending me the link already. Like, I should have already had it. Let's, down, let's get it. On my phone. <laughs> Save the best. We got you. We got you. Definitely. Yes. Let's yes. Let's go. Mm. Thank you so much, Kim. Seriously. Oh my God. Like you don't know. You oh my God. Mm -hmm. We have been uplifted to the yo. I'm I'm speechless. Um and you know what's beautiful about this episode, especially? It's the end of the yeah. week. You yes. know, we end it on a good note to be ready for Sunday and what's to come Fast. ahead. So. Oh, I like you because I think I'm going What you just said? Let's go. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> now I love you guys. Oh, for real. Great. I feel like this was like, uh, like I've known both of you my whole life. Like that was great. But clearly, I did know you my whole life because I guess your middle name, like. Hey, you just you came out the gates. I'm just like. That was spirit. Hey, Potter, that was God. Knew. God already knew you. That wasn't me. Yeah. God already knew you. He had to talk to you today. Clearly, he had to. Must, he must have said something that was specifically for you. That's why he was like, "I know you, Charles." <laughs> it's crazy it's cool though because it's like he just came to you he's like before you hop on in a few minutes charles oh copy okay like, <laughs> <Right? laughs> <laughs> copy got you oh, God. <laughs> yes. yes thank, but thank um, you guys absolutely no problem and definitely we um thank you and have a blessing Yes. The rest of your day. Yes. Thank you. Okay, you guys happy. enjoy also. Peace. I like to end everything with one word. So my one word is love. Okay. Yes. Yes. Love. Say it one more time. 
Say it one more time. Say it, please say it one more time. One word is love. All right. Yeah, I hear her people. Word. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yo. Let's get it. Should we get a moment of silence for like? Let's go a good 10 seconds. 10 seconds? No problem. Let it marinate. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> Okay, we go. All right. We go. We go. We go. We go. Let's we go. get it. Let's get it. Thank you, everyone. That is episode 12. And there you have it. Kimberly Soul Servant. And also, she has a video. Um, God did not create me for no reason. I have a purpose. Check it out on YouTube. It's yo, I'm powerful. Talking, she is amazing. Yes. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these guys, check this out on uh, Anchor. Check this out on Spotify. Yo, what else? Apple Music. You, yo, let's get Apple, Apple Music. Apple Music, like YouTube. Yo, we yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. really doing this. Let's did it. But thank y'all. All right, bye. Have a good one. Peace.